Hi everybody, Logan here. Um, I just want to do a quick video um, related to this, um, I think it's relatively new, uh, plugin for um, Photoshop which is Star Exterminator. Now, Star Exterminator, I'll just bring up the web page here. This is uh, has been done by Russell Croman, I think that's how you say his surname, sorry if I've said that incorrectly. Um, the person who brought us um, Gradient Exterminator, well, I don't have that written down there, but uh, and this is uh, a, a plugin for Photoshop to remove stars. Uh, if I just cross over here, you can see here's um, if you on his uh, web page um, with the stars and then with the stars removed. Now um, I saw a video by James from the DSO Imaging channel here, um, which you should check out. It's got some fantastic content. And about five days ago, he did a first look video at Star Exterminator, and I was actually quite impressed by the results. So I thought uh, maybe I would process a um, something from scratch using Star Exterminator. And I'd collected over the last few weeks, just off and on between imaging other um, targets, about just under seven hours for the uh, Lagoon Nebula. So I thought, why not just go ahead and do that right from the beginning and, and see how that goes. So I collected my HA, which I've got here. Um, each one is, you know, roughly about sort of two and a half hours. Um, so they're, they're relatively similar lengths of time. Uh, this is the O3 and this is the S2. The thing I liked about the S2 is it's got a lot of this um, amazing sort of squiggly detail in the centre, uh, which is a little lost in the um, O3 and the um, Hydrogen Alpha. So um, I really wanted to keep that in my final image, so I worked on combining the HA and the S2 together um, to give me my luminance, which I'll show you a little bit later. So then it was a matter of deciding, well, what shall I do? Should I combine them uh, with the LRGB combination tool? I put um, HA to green, S2 to red, and O3 to blue, as is commonly done for a Hubble-style palette, and um, came up with uh, an image like this. Now, this has had um, some of the degreening done as well to give more of that typical Hubble palette look. Uh, to then be worked on. But what I did notice was I, with my white stars here, I had some sort of white um, surrounds or halos here, which I was a bit concerned about that if I actually removed these with Star Exterminator, it might remove the stars nicely, but still leave me with these um, white surrounds, which you often see in uh, using Starnet. So um, I probably should have just immediately taken this um, straight, saved as a TIFF, taken it into Photoshop, used Star Exterminator plug on it, plug in on it to remove the stars, and then brought it back in to see what kind of job it did. Um, but I didn't do that until the end, um, which is probably a bit of a mistake. I might have saved myself um, some steps. But anyway, I decided to actually um, take the HA03 and S2. Um, versions into Photoshop and remove the stars straight off. So I'm just going to bring this back a bit um, for earlier process. So this was the HA and this is how um, Star Exterminator took out the stars and man did it do a good job. I mean you cannot see a hint of any of these stars. Now the Lagoon Nebula here doesn't have a lot of bright stars or very bright stars um, in the image anyway but um, there was just no sign of stars, artifacts, no crisscross patterns, no sort of halos around where the stars had been, still kept all nice detail. Um, so yeah, I was, I was really impressed. Um, this was the O3 Starless here, again, not a sign of where stars might be. And the, um, the S2, I'm just gonna step back a bit here, uh, a couple of steps. And, um, it may be a little tiny bit, but I think over here, this might be nebula. I'm, I can't remember now whether this was sort of a little tiny amount of artifact, but you know, um, it was very, very clean. So I combined them um, together to get this more typical look when you first combine your HA, S2 and O3. 
and then did a bit of um, green removal to give more of the typical um, Hubble palette look and then went ahead and processed it further to get the colours um, that I wanted. So for example, um, use the colour mask tool, this was the yellow mask, um, this was the green, not quite so different but a little different to give me uh, a bit of variation in the, in the colour tones and this was the, the cyan here. And uh, that sort of gave me a, a nice basis of the RGB image to work with. Then it was a matter of um, producing my luminance. And as I said, I wanted to do combine the HA and the S2 because I didn't want to lose the nice detail in here. So to both of these, I did my usual. I applied the HDR uh, multi-scale transform tool. I used a setting of seven on this and you click to lightness and lightness mask and apply it. And if I just step forward here, you'll see that's um, with it applied. It's also had some local histogram equalization applied as well to give that, that appearance. The HA, similar sort of a process applied um, uh, these to that, uh, to the HA as well. And you can see a lot more detail does suddenly appear when you do that. Um, the core is nowhere near as blown out. And um, I end up doing a combination of the two of them. So this is the HAS2 uh, combined luminance, which I then applied to my um, red, green, and blue uh, or color part to give my to give me um, this look here, which I, I quite liked. Um, it still maintained this detail in the center. It still had some nice detail of all the, the cloud formation and the lagoon nebula. And then it was a matter of putting the stars back in. Now I'm still working on that process. I still think I'm not very good at putting the stars back in. As you can see over here, I've got a big collection of um, star mask versions where I've taken stars out, made some adjustments to them and put them back in. And a lot of them just didn't look very good. And I'm not 100% happy with the with the final version I did with the stars, but it, it, it's, it's not too bad. And here it is here. So the stars are... Not very pronounced which is nice there in the background where you can see the stars um, look quite good out here the star color etc it's just I do struggle a little bit when I'm getting them back into where the nebula is they just look a little bit flat and dull to me here so that's something for me to work on but um, you know you're not always necessarily looking at images zooming in like this anyway so the general look was um, I was quite pleased with. I actually didn't mind um, the orientation. You know, most often um, the uh, Lagoon Nebula is oriented more sideways, and I understand why because you, you, it fills the field quite nicely. But I didn't actually mind this look, this sort of more um, vertical look. It's and a couple of people have described it as looking a bit like a rift in space with a portal in the center. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of a different look to it. I, I, I quite um, liked it, but I was you know very impressed by what uh, the Star Exterminator did as far as removing the stars, not leaving artifacts. Now, as I said, the I at the very end I thought, well, let's get this image and um, apply Starnet to it and apply Star Exterminator to it. Um, if you were combining them, your HA, S2 and O3 straight away together and then removing the stars rather than doing starless monochrome versions that I did. So obviously we're going to look into these bright stars here. If we have a look at what Starnet did, it did a pretty good job, but you can see that there are these white halos around where the stars were. Um, little white marks in the blue all over the place and uh, a bit more pronounced here. And there is a slight checkerboard look to it, although this isn't too bad. Um, if we look at the Star Exterminator version, um, there are none of those white areas. You've got this, it's really even things out beautifully. You've got no disturbance of your nice blue sort of color in here. It just did a fantastic job at removing those stars. So I could have saved myself a few steps of um, moving the monochrome starless versions into Photoshop and removing the stars. I could have just combined them um, straight away and then removed the stars. Admittedly that's probably a really good way, would have worked well on this image because it doesn't have some very bright stars. I'm not sure what the best method would be if you've got some very bright stars. I thought it would be better to do a bit of comparison on an image I did of M2 
uh, 20, the Trifid or Trifid Nebula, where there are a lot more bright stars in the image, just to compare the two the two programs. Now this is fully processed, um, so I have gone through the whole um, processing um, routine, so it's not like I'm starting early on immediately after the combination of the, the channels. But um, bright stars here, if we have a look at um, Starnet, um, and you can see here, just move it over here, lots of sort of these halos around uh, where the stars were, blue halos, um, and if we just zoom into say this one here, uh, you can see that there is, um, you know, there, oops, sorry, there are these quite hard looking lines. There is this waffle iron look about here, which is kind of hard to deal with um, when you're processing because that does not go away when you put the stars back in. Uh, more of these little areas where the stars were, this is not so pronounced, the waffle iron look there, but um, that's partly um, probably because of the way I've processed it. but. If we pull out um, the Star Exterminator version, um, you can see there's quite a huge difference. We don't have this we have to deal with anymore. You see the blue um, halos over here and here, and they're just not pronounced over here. There's perhaps one over here to deal with, but I'm just going to zoom in to this area, which is uh, where the brightest one star was. This is the area we have to deal with. And if we just pop into here, um, there's really just you know the vaguest hint of it over here um so yeah it does a fantastic job and um i'm gonna be using it in the future for sure i um hate having to deal with these artifacts from starnet so if i don't have to deal with that um, um i'm happy i don't think it's really um done any damage to the image um, me saving it early on as a TIFF file and taking it into Photoshop and then bring it back into PixInsight. I, I know when you save a TIFF, Pix, a TIFF file, PixInsight says, you know, you're going to be losing some of the information and the quality, etc. But, you know, for the purposes of what I'm doing, I, I don't see it doing any harm um, whatsoever and I'm not going to be blowing up something as a giant billboard anyway with, with the images. So... Yeah, it's a great, great program. There's um, a 30 day trial, so you can give it a go and see how it, it works. I think it is, if I have a look, I think it's 59 US dollars. Um, but really, I mean, for what it actually achieves, um, here we go, if we're going to purchase, we'll just have a quick look here. Uh, 59.95, so about 60 bucks um, American. Um, which unfortunately is a lot more New Zealand, but that's okay. Um, and you can get it for plug-in for Mac or Windows. Um, but yeah, I'd say grab the trial versions, 30-day trial, um, and see how it works on your images. But um, for me, I found it worked f fantastically. So um, yeah, hopefully this has been a little bit... Uh, interesting on um, how Starnet compares to Star Exterminator and how it can be incorporated into your um, processing either early on in the processing even later on if you like if you want to do a final stylus version to present to you know Instagram or Facebook or whatever um, and um, also how uh, you don't necessarily need to remove those stars before you combine your monochrome images Anyway, thank you for watching, um, and uh, if you're enjoying the videos, uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button, um, that would be great, um, and we'll see you in the next video.